Welcome to CACC 37 Fall 2020. I'm your course instructor, Richard Banzer. This is week one, video clip 1.1. In this video, I'll show you my online classroom and then take you to the course website where we'll discuss administrative details, assignments, due dates, marks, breakdown, tutorial structure, lecture structure. For now though, let's look at the online classroom. Left side of the screen will be a document camera, upper right corner, a graphic stylus hovering over a paint window right now. And this, this application could change depending on our needs from video to video. And in the lower right corner, that's where I will reside. Sometimes I, I will leave behind a curtain, for example, I'll be back. Sometimes I'll be, behind, I'll be behind another app, such as the course website. But rest assured, I'm there and I'll be back. So let's have a look at uh, the three components. Document camera. Behaves well, much the same as a document camera in a in-person lecture. I can write, you'll of course see my hand motion now there's a bit of a difference, I think, between an online document camera and an in-person, in-class document camera. In in class, yeah, sure, the document camera is a focus. It's the screen, projection screen is a focus, but there's other things to look at. The chalkboard, um, sometimes I'm walking around in front of the room. You can look at your classmates to the left of you, your classmates to the right of you, behind you, hopefully not too much behind you, in front of you. And uh, the hand motion on the dot camera is not quite as distracting as it is with an online classroom and an online document camera. So in order to try to alleviate that, sometimes when I'm writing, if I have to write a lot or I have to write something very technical and um, I need to focus, instead of having this, this distraction of the hand movement, I will on occasion bring up a, let's call it a curtain, on top of the document camera, that will allow me to to um, to write without being tracked by the camera. And then, after I'm finished writing, I will bring the camera back by lowering the curtain. And uh, I mean that's not very technical, but I think you get the idea. Another reason that uh, the document camera should sometimes be behind a curtain is when I'm using other applications on the in the classroom. For instance, if I want to go up and use the graphic stylus, which is to the to the right of, of uh, the document camera, you don't need to see my hand swiping over the document camera when I'm using the graphic stylus. Yes, I, I could bring things full screen and put them back again, and I'll do that sometimes too, but when I'm switching back and forth, I, I kind of like to have everything side by side, and um, so I, I put the screen up so I can move over to something else without being too distracted by hand motion. So upper right corner, stylus over paint window. Um, you've seen paint before, I'm sure. I can choose various colors. I can annotate existing documents like my title page. It's quite nice. So I will use this on occasion. 2020, the year of hindsight. Let's uh, clear this off. I could also, by the way, do things like bring up 3D paint. Um, I don't have anything really to say about 3D paint right now, but I might later on. Uh, animations, 3D shapes, 2D shapes, uh, a bigger variety of brushes and colors and 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 themes and you know there's more there's more um, flexibility with 3d paint than with just 2d paint but uh, I don't need to do that now but it's there for us and I think I should clean up my title page there we go so I'm still here in the lower right corner I'll come back since I keep promising to be back. 
Y again. And um, that's, that's about it for the, the format of the online class. Pretty simple. Right now, I just have three apps open. And again, occasionally, I'll, I'll bring in different apps or maybe more apps. There's lots of flexibility here. Each video could have a slightly different setup, but, but that, that's the, the flavor of it. So now let's um, bring up the course website. Should probably make it full screen for you. Where do you find the course website? Well, if you're watching this video, I guess you've already found it. There's the URL. On the top of my page, I uh, link to downtown U of T and UTSC, in case you want to browse there for a bit. Uh, my course announcements are at the top of the page. I post my announcements, the most recent on top, so there's not much yet. Welcome to CC C37. This one is uh, quite relevant. There's no tutorials the week of September 7th to September 12th. You should be careful using the word next because these are asynchronous lectures. You could be watching them anytime, any day. But with the date on the announcement and if the announcement's worded clearly enough, there's no ambiguity. Top announcement reminds you where the lecture tutorial and assignment materials are. They're on the bottom of the main page. I'll get to those soon. Other information on the home page or the main page, uh, my contact information, office, phone number, email. Office hours this term will be via Zoom. I'll post the days and times soon. The lectures are online asynchronous. There are two lecture sections, but both, both lecture sections will view the same set of videos. Tutorials are online synchronous. Now, by now, you know the difference between asynchronous and synchronous. The lectures you may view at your convenience anytime. I'll say more about that soon. The tutorials, though, are synchronous, meaning that you have to commit to a, a certain time each week if you wish to join your TA Zoom meeting. Your TA will invite you or I will invite you to a Zoom meeting at your designated time each week. If you're not sure of your time, you can always visit the registrar's online timetable. I'm sure you've done this before. Type in your course. Search, and uh, there we are. Two lecture sections asynchronous, and five tutorial sections, one per week, synchronous. So you have to be in the tutorial section to be invited to the Zoom meeting. So be sure you know which section you are enrolled in and that you'll get an invitation. Probably not, probably not week two because uh, tutorials are meant to cover material and lectures. And I don't think we're gonna get that far in lectures in week one. So the tutorials likely will not start until week three, but if you wanna know for sure, you know where to go, course announcements. The textbook, I will uh, extract, extract material from it. I'll, I'll be careful to uh, uh, keep it uh, self-contained and um, I'll cite appropriately. Course information sheet, I'll come back to that um, at the end of this, this clip. MATLAB, there are uh, is coding in this course and assignments and the coding will use MATLAB. It's a really nice package for numerical computation. So here is their website. They have a tutorial subpage where you can um, see some nice demos. You could have a look at this yourself now, but the TAs will also go over it and, and explain how to access it at UTSC. And that takes us to the bottom of the page where I have my three sub pages for lecture, tutorial, and assignment materials. Let's look at assignments first. This is where your handouts will be posted. Uh, there's nothing yet, of course. You'll submit through Marcus. You may have used this before. I set it up for you. 
Make sure you're on the C37 Marcus page when you're submitting your C37 assignments. And uh, as usual, you must submit by the date and time shown on the, on the handout. It's not always 11.59, so be careful you read the time carefully and, pop, and to submit on the time that's on the handout. Late submissions will be accepted but with a penalty, and, and that's discussed in the course information sheet, which I will get to soon. Tutorials. This is where uh, I'll post a, a, an agenda for each week's tutorial. If there are any handouts that are relevant to all tutorial sections, I will post them here as well. Uh, that all, that's not going to always happen. The, the TAs will have their own material and, and they'll present it uh, at, their, at their Zoom meeting, perhaps using share screen. But if there's anything common to all tutorials, this is a place where I'll post it. And the third page is lecture materials. That's where you found this video clip. It's kind of strange that it's still pending. This is a live link now. I should hit refresh. However, I don't think I want to interrupt my video feed. There's another reason I don't want to hit refresh. You think about it. And um, I might say something about this. These lectures are asynchronous. You could be watching them anytime, any day. Just be careful about things like that. Uh, typically, there'll be three to four video clips per week, not, not this week. And the total runtime will be about two lectures worth. Uh, that, that's the designated lecture time for, for this course. I know there was a, initially a three hour slot scheduled last year, but I, I usually only use two or two hours and 15 minutes or maybe 220 of it. So, um, you know, 100 to 120 minutes of lectures each week, that I believe is about two lectures worth. But it'll be split into shorter videos, 30, 40 minutes each. Three 40 minute videos is sufficient for 120 minutes. So asynchronous means you can view them at your convenience. However, you note that we advise you to view them each week, at least once, because you really have to get ready for the next week's lectures, so you know what I'm talking about. And uh, also, you don't want to fall behind. But when it comes time to uh, do an assignment or get prepped for a test, uh, you can always go back and watch them again. They'll, they'll be there for you. Okay, um, back to the main page. I skipped over course information. Let's look at it now. <clears throat> this is our, our contract, if you will, with the uh, Department of Computer and Mathematical Sciences. The, the official policies of the course are on this page. So I've given the syllabus. I've repeated my contact information, office hours. I even linked to the course website from the course information page. You know, on the course website, you can go to the course information page. That's interesting. I hope you took B63 and learned about cyclic graphs. <clears throat> it's not really important. This is there for your convenience. Lectures, asynchronous tutorials, synchronous. I've also, again, linked to the registrar's online timetable, <clears throat> the text. This is probably what you're waiting for, the grading scheme. Three components, exam, term test, assignments, 35, 25, 40. It's more or less the typical grading scheme I use for a course. To pass the course, you need 50%, and you must receive at least 40% on the final exam. You look at this marks breakdown, and you could pass this course without writing the final exam, 65, 35. However, if you don't show up for the final exam, I have to fail you for obvious reasons. And uh, that uh, is, is not something we want to do. You could also uh, show up for the final exam, I guess, I guess and get less than 40% on it and, and walk out feeling terribly. It's, it's likely uh, your classmates are feeling the same, or a lot of them. I, I'm not going to <clears throat> auto-fail the majority of the class. So this 40% on the final exam is applied after I make an adjustment to the final exam to make the average in, in a respectable range, mid-60s. 
I don't think I've ever failed anybody because they've gotten less than 40% on the final exam. I have failed people for not <clears throat> showing up for the final exam for obvious reasons. So uh, show up, do your best, and hopefully you'll be okay. Format, tests, final exam, which you've been waiting to hear. They're open book. That's great. You have free access to the web when writing the exam. However, I also have access to the web when designing the exam. And surprisingly, open book exams can be quite challenging. So don't assume it's going to be open book and easy. The fact that it's open book may mean that it's actually a little bit harder. But we'll make, we'll make do with this and uh, it should work out. Um, talked about assignments being submitted on Marcus. I was going over the assignment materials page. Here is the official late policy. 25% penalty for up to 24 hours past the due time. That is 25% off the maximum mark attainable on the assignment. Assignment is out of 40. You hand it in late. You'll lose 10 marks. Now that's enough to dissuade most people from going for the late submission. But it also gives you a way out if something does happen and you have to submit late. Okay, back to the main page. And I think that might be it. Um, I'll get ready to, to sign off. I'll bring back the title page. I'll bring back me. Remember, I said I'd be back. And um, I hope you found that informative. And I think you knew this was coming, but I'm going to do it anyways. I will see you soon. Take care.